Miguel's monologue. Miguel, I woke up with a start because Papa was shaking me and shouting, fire, fire, get up, get up. My first thought was of Esperanza, choking on thick smoke, alone and afraid in her bedroom. I followed my parents outside and my heart lurched as I saw that it was indeed her house aglow with fire. As we raced to the courtyard, the air thick with smoke and we could see flames licking at all the windows on the first floor. The horses had caught the scent of smoke in the wind and were screaming with fear. Before going inside, Papa shouted a warning for me not to follow him. I had to fight the urge to go inside, knowing he needed to focus on finding Senora Ortega and Esperanza rather than worrying about me. I heard him calling for them, and I waited for what felt like hours for everything moving in slow motion around me, for them all to come out. With a rush of relief, I saw Esperanza come out the kitchen door and I ran to her. She was disoriented and confused. I wanted to comfort her, but when I saw she was safe, my concern turned to Senora Ortega and Abuelita. I grabbed Esperanza, Esperanza and asked, trying to make sense of where they were, but she only whimpered. Following her gaze, I saw Senora Ortega, her eyes wild, crying out for Abuelita. I ran to her and she confirmed that she had seen Abuelita in the burning house. Without thinking, I ran inside, covering my nose and mouth, fighting my way through the chokingly thick smoke. Inside, the heat was intense and it was difficult to see anything. All around me, I could hear the house creaking loudly, threatening to crumble on top of me. And there was a lot of crashing and banging as wood gave way and things fell to the ground. Straining my ears for the sound of Abuelita crying out, I heard what sounded like a faint cough and I ran towards it. Abuelita was lying on the floor hopelessly, clutching a bag with a white knuckle grip, the flames threatening to consume her. She groaned as I carefully picked her up and carried her towards the door. The flames were closing in, licking at my back as we ran outside. As I laid her down in the courtyard, I heard Mama screaming at me, and the next thing I knew, Papa wrestled me to the ground, rolling me over and over. Apparently, my shirt was on fire, but I hadn't felt anything because I had been fueled by the adrenaline. When the flames were out, I stood up and took, a, took off my shirt. Fortunately, I was not badly burned. If I had been, it would have been a small price to pay for the safety of Esperanza and her family. They mean to, as much to me as my own family. Mama's mon monologue. Mama, I hadn't slept well since Sixto. I was thinking through our options for the thousandth time, trying to figure out what to do that was best for me and my little Esperanza and for Abuelita. I caught a whiff of something burning and then I heard a thump. My eyes quick, my heart quickened as it dawned on me that my worst fears were being realized. Those vultures were burning my beautiful house down. I flew out of the bed and headed straight for Esperanza's room. The smoke was already thick in the hall. I took her and screamed for her to wake up and she came to groggily. My heart jumped into my mouth as I looked into my baby's fearful, confused eyes. I pulled her out of the bed and grabbed a damp cloth from a washbowl to cover her nose and mouth. With relief, I heard Alfonso calling our names and I screamed back to guide him to the sound of our voices. I knew that he would do everything in his power to keep my family safe. Esperanza quickly sensed my urgency and together we ran, ran down the hall to Abuelita's room, knowing that we had very little time to get out. Desperately looking through the smoke at the empty bed and into the corner of the room, I couldn't see Abuelita anywhere and a sense of dread came over me. Where is she? Is she hurt? I have to find her. Those were the thoughts racing through my head. Conflicted, I wanted to find Abuelita, but I also knew I had to get Esperanza to safety. I screamed to Espe es Alfonso that I couldn't find Abuelita, and he directed me to head downstairs immediately. I instructed Esperanza to crouch down low with me to get under the fog like smoke as we cautiously descended the stairs. The heat was searing our faces and the house seemed to be screaming at us in a hurry, screaming at us to hurry up because it couldn't hold itself up any longer. Alfonso was waiting for us at the bottom to guide us through the kitchen. My eyes were streaming from the smoke and I couldn't see a thing. As soon as we emerged into the courtyard, I looked around desperately searching for Abuelita, but there were people and horses everywhere. 
I heard myself cry out for her, but couldn't see her anywhere. Like a knight on a white horse, Miguel came running to me asking about Abuelita, and as soon as he realized that she was still inside, he bravely disappeared into the house, swallowed up by the flames. I stared at the doorway, waiting, waiting, waiting. I had almost given up hope of ever seeing Abuelita or Miguel again when he emerged from the fire carrying Abuelita in his arms. He laid her down gently and I ran to her, cradling her in my arms. She was alive but very weak and her ankle looked broken. Without Miguel, she wouldn't be here. I owe so much to our precious friends.